This is Partners in Crime with Adam Croft and Robert Dawes. Hello, Partners in Crime, <laughs> episode 140. Hello, Goodness Bob. Happy me, birthday. No well, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, uh, a year older yesterday. Um, Star Wars Day, as I realised that my birthday is now called, uh, which um, <laughs> is ironic in the Dawes household because uh, I've only had the pleasure of watching the films, never being in them. So, yes, uh, yeah, that was yesterday. I had a lovely time. A family, Amy, made a sport me silly. But uh, back to reality today, and uh, here we are podding, which is well, uh, very pleasant. We are the morning after for you. How is the head? It's still on my shoulders, which I always take to be a very good sign. Um, it's, I'm a little, little blurry. As I've f- found out, I sort of for every half hour of energy I put into something, I seem to need half an hour to recover these days. But uh, <laughs> there we are. Um, the sun is out once again this morning here in uh, mid Bedfordshire, and uh, which is very nice because we had a storm. We've had two days of high winds and wet weather and goodness knows what else very inclement uh weather uh, so uh, my birthday was spent indoors with the heating on uh, but today i'm going to venture out into the sun and see if i can get some free vitamin d uh mm. going so uh, how about you did you have a lovely week i did i've um it's a rare occurrence for me but i've actually not had a drink uh since since the weekend actually since sunday so i wanted to try and get a contrast with you as much as possible see if i can be the chirpy one this week (laughs) yes well i think you'll probably succeed that normally you don't need to actually give up alcohol to (laughs) be a little chirpier than moi i don't know about that that's that's fantastic have you had no side effects have you not had any sort of withdrawal symptoms from your glass of red or your pint of yeah, fine o- only one I found. Um, it, it's given me um, an overwhelming craving for beer. <laughs> well, it, it won't last long. Don't worry. I mentioned last last week. I've become slightly. Uh, I've never been a, a beer drinker, uh, really. Um, I, there's nothing quite like a nice cold wet lager um, at the back of your throat after on a hot summer's day or abroad or whatever. But I've never really been drawn to it. But I have actually recently, lately, been drawn to. Uh, no alcohol lagers and they've really really done a splendid job so mm. that's what um that's what i have a drink when i don't want to have uh, uh, any assault on my liver um so yeah well well done congratulations that's that's quite an achievement when are you are you done the pub tonight or are you at home opening um, a bottle of well no this is the issue isn't it the pubs are yeah, open too. which is lovely but you've got to sit outside and the weather's absolutely dreadful although the last drink it's... i did have was in a pub i did actually venture out to the beer garden on sunday the weather was lovely i uh, did have a friend who was who was free as well and, and wasn't actually busy that day which they, they all seem to be working every time it's it's nice weather although i suspect what they're actually doing is all going down a different beer garden together without me there we go yeah, I'm well, sure that's paranoia. Sure. Let's <laughs> yeah. face it, that's paranoia. Which What's happened? I've been crime writing for ten years. Uh, Out just of interest, the one up the road from the one up the road from me, the other direction from your house. I didn't want to accidentally bump into you. So <laughs> I, tur- I turned left. <laughs> I don't know where that is. Is it the bumblebee or the oh, blackbirds? Oh, or... oh yes, the blackbirds. Yes, yes. It much, was the much, blackbirds. Yes, much closer. Yes, well, well done you. Well, what a week, what a contentious week, what an exciting <laughs> week. Goodness knows, we, we managed to spend most of last week talking about um, Line of Duty, and it seems that uh, the United Kingdom has spent most of the last week and actually most of the last month talking non-stop about Line of Duty. But the last episode came out on Sunday in the UK, um, and it's very hard to have this conversation without certain spoilers. So if you haven't seen it yet and you don't know anything about it or, or whatever, then please um, fast forward uh, yeah. this podcast till we get on to uh, other subjects. But well, I think I Moriarty's going to. I was going to say Moriarty is going to put a link in the show notes or a mention yeah. as to what time you can skip to if you're watching or listening to this now and you you don't want the line of duty spoilers. Uh, Moriarty will pop a little time stamp in the show notes to let you know which point you can skip to 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 be safe. Um, but yes, we have two contrasting ideas. We have we we agree in certain areas, and we we sort of don't agree in other areas. So why don't I, you know, hand you the floor? <laughs> Tell me what did you think about the grand finale of uh, series six of Line of Duty? Well, anybody who's 
followed me on social media or was looking at my, my posts that were coming up late on, on Sunday night um, after those those drinks, I, I hasten to add, um, will probably uh, know that my thoughts weren't entirely positive. Um, <clears throat> and with the, the passing of a, a few days since, it's not really changed, I'll be honest with you. Um, it, it very much felt to me as if that wasn't the intended ending. I know he's saying it was and had planned it ahead. Yes. But I just can't see that it felt a very cut and shut we normally get uh, six episodes and the last one is an extended 90 minute episode it's it that didn't happen they split it over two 60 minute episodes and we had a, an episode seven and those two episodes seemed completely at odds with all the others in this series and in the other yeah. series so there was a lot i mean when they ended episode six i said to you didn't i there's gonna be a hell of a lot to tie up in episode seven, yeah. there's a lot of loose threads yeah. that got to be tidied up there. And it was going to be a challenge for them to tidy up all of those. I was very disappointed. They didn't seem to type any of them. And they introduced new plot threads in the last episode yeah. that still weren't resolved <laughs> by no. the end of the episode. It, it seemed very strange. I, I can only assume there was some last minute change of plan because we know Jeff Curie's writing is absolutely superb. We've seen it on everything he's written. We've seen it on six series of Line of Duty. We've seen it in the vast majority even of this series of Line of Duty. And then it just fell flat on its face. And I really don't know why. It just doesn't make sense. There's something else there. Well, I do know what my initial reaction was the same. I said, uh, I said it, it was a bit diddly do. It left me a bit little flat. I've sort of revived that in, 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 a, in a way. But to pick up the point that you've just made about it being a strange ending, perhaps you don't know that in actual fact they r recorded uh, a few endings, uh, different endings in order to make sure that the word didn't come out from any of the crew or anything. Because, you know, television these days, as I mentioned last week, is is paranoid. It's like the White House of Parliament paranoid about, uh, you know, the, the the story breaking out and, uh, and surprises um, uh, being spoiled. So I wonder whether he, he chose that ending nearer to transmission uh, because he took on board you know, responses of various other things. You know, he doesn't need to. He's a Jim Mercurio. He can do what he likes. But so that may be one thing. I, I, I did also find that it was um, it didn't answer. That ending didn't answer everything. In fact, it seemed to set up more than it actually answered, which it basically is the way uh, all the uh, series have sort of ended. I think one of the big disappointments for a lot of people is that they were expecting the big ending, the high octane, um, you know, ed ending and and set pieces that uh, the series has been so brilliant at um, uh, achieving, amongst many other things. You know, uh, people wouldn't be happy unless there was Osborne or Carmichael, one of those two, sitting on a big leather sleep uh, seat, stroking a white cat in front of a big sort of pool full of man-eating sharks in the Bond way. And uh, and they didn't get that. Instead, we got a, a very different answer and to, to who H was. If indeed, and this is one of the big questions, if the person who uh, we now think is H actually is H, I personally don't, and perhaps we'll never know. But it was a little underwhelming, and it was interesting to see uh, the actor playing uh, Buckles uh, sort of having to defend himself, not himself, but defend yeah. the ending of, of the programme because people said it wasn't interesting enough. Well, I don't think, uh, I, I, I think he was terrific in the part and he absolutely played a blinder. And I think if you look through all the series, Jim Mercurio has played uh, a due diligence to it. I mean, he set up clues that Buckles was involved, but... Uh, so he can frame back and said, you know, there we are. That proves that. That proves that. What about, you know, letting Caddy talk to, what's his name, um, um, the mm. OCG gang leader, Terry, and all that sort of thing. So it's all there. So he can put his hand and he's done his, he's done his job. But the, the thing is, people didn't like the person who turned out to be H. Not the actor. He was marvellous. But the, the, the character. I, I don't think it's so much that. I think it's, it, it's, I mean, yes, it's kind of logical that it's him. It's kind of almost too logical in fact because he's the only flipping officer who worked on both the cases that they were looking yeah. into um his you know 
the, the so in, in fact it's almost too convenient and and too obvious that he was discounted because and it's fine it being him and I like the realism of yes, you know, I corruption isn't always one big head head honcho and you know it's kind of um, it, it, it's endemic in the system and a lot of it's not necessarily deliberate it's just kind of ingrained in and in systemic corruption which is they're fine and, and necessarily they're just cowards falling as the, the exactly. line is and yeah. falling up. And 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 this is, is and this is realistic, and this is how it works. But yeah. to only introduce that possibility, and that concept, at the end, in the last episode, I felt was a bit of a cop out. It's it's being built up that there are these big head honchos, and there's four people running this, and you know somebody at the top, and there's a proper organised network, and to then find out that the whole premise of the six series was was never actually there in the first place that i think that's where people feel a bit disappointed i don't think the ending necessarily is the issue it's the fact that it's so at odds with everything that was set up before it well yes i, I and a lot of people have commented on the fact that uh, um it's it's the ending um was so they didn't quite believe that the the buckles was capable of doing what he uh, is supposed to have done and i don't think uh, i do and I agree with you. It's real. That's what life is is like. Unfortunately, you know, criminals are not necessarily big, showy arch villains that we we normally come across. They can be very ordinary cowards in the corner who actually create havoc. Um, but uh, I think one of the main things is with Lion of Duty, it is always, always, always been entertaining. Um, and uh, Jabba Kirio is well known for these amazing plots and his ability to manipulate them, and that's the way he works. I mean, some might say that he's actually more plot uh, heavy than character heavy. I mean, he doesn't necessarily go into any great detail about anyone's lives. Okay, we know that, uh, that one of them's got a bad back, and the other one has sort of left money for that he shouldn't have done in an attic, and all that sort of thing. So, but we don't really delve very far behind the characters in the way that maybe other series do, like Unforgiven gotten Chris you know where we really get into the family other other problems and and difficulties which influence their work although that's still plotted so that's that's one thing I don't think I'm going to say something now I don't think it was necessarily helped and this is the only real criticism I've got uh, yes it wasn't a, a, a wham bam you know extraordinary ending okay it was real it was authentic it was well set up it was well judged and for, you know as ever brilliantly executed but my one criticism is that we had a photograph uh, and pictures of uh, a star actor James Nesbitt turn up which I think sounded probably like an idea that probably came up late at night over over a glass of red wine um, with, with, with a few mates, dare I say it, and uh, one of them, of course, being um, James himself, a, a splendid actor. But I think that was the first time that the series went out of the bounds of that sort of writing because it focused on a star actor. So we became absolutely convinced, lots of people became absolutely convinced that he had to be coming back. There had to be the big scene. He had to be resolved and it really wasn't now have you, had you used maybe a less well-known face or a, if you're looking for a well-known face you know possibly and i'm no writer in, uh, in that respect but you brought back nigel um morton remember nigel mm. morton david morrissey the one who actually ended up you know being bent but actually retired on a, a full pension and a disability pension which he didn't deserve because he didn't need a stick to walk on now that would have been believable that he'd retired and he was maybe in spain he was coming back whatever and that he, name never he, came he, up he as wouldn't a need, yeah he wouldn't need to come back either in the actual scene to find out he died weeks no. ago would have been fine to introduce a new character played by a yeah. very famous actor who never actually appears in the scene he just plays a photo and I can see why it was done and I can see it was a little joke on on Jeb Mercurio's part I thought it was but, like I think it was an in joke but I think it yeah. really created more 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 trouble because I but was that, that's not line of duty it. is it that's the thing it got well, a little it, bit self congratulatory at that point what, I think what, and, what we're saying is it, it's not organic to the whole process and and, you know, Jim Mercurio is so brilliant at, at having control over every area of things. And it just seemed that it, this was something that came from outside of the box mm -hmm. and influenced what was happening uh, with, within the box far more than maybe it was intended to, you know. And that was based on the fact that 
you know, you can't have James Nesbitt just turn up in a couple of photographs <laughs> and, and give him a, give him a character and then turn up dead. You can't even see him. And then everyone suspect that the Spanish policeman had the same eyebrows. And he went down this rabbit hole, you know, which is great, but it wasn't an authentic red herring because no. it took on proportions which were which were greater. And I think that led to possibly us taking the eye off the ball of the the more authentic ones like buckles or whatever the more ordinary ones because we were he'd set that up he may have wanted to do that but i don't think that was in, absolutely integral uh to uh the whole process of of the series as we as we've seen them and it seemed a bit of an in joke that to my mind was about the only thing that backfired and saying that you know it's easy to knock it expectations for this show are huge and responsibility for this extraordinary success let's face it 12.8 million viewers it's a huge success the bbc really want more uh it hasn't been commissioned which begs all sorts of other conspiracy conspiracy theories and uh, i think i mentioned last week that i wouldn't be surprised if there weren't any more but the time well, you know, I, I think there needs to be. I think. Well, I think, I think the there you, needs to yeah, be. But will it? Certainly after the resp response of this, and you know, maybe he's he's got other fish to to fry. You know, he's he's had huge successes with his other series uh, and setting those other things. I mean, I could see him quite happily uh, and ha having the process to actually get the, get to grips with a, a big um, scope series of you know twenty episodes show run on a big Netflix or something like that. Doesn't mean it's doesn't you know when i said international last last week i mean probably with uh, a, a, a huge mm. scope maybe that's where he might be going this is pure conjecture and it's none of my ruddy business to tell the to tell the truth who knows i would love to see another series lots of people will but i'll be very surprised if he actually doesn't take the john cleese um uh ricky gervais route and say i'll tell you what that's the canon and I'm not going to go any further. Yeah, but they, they were know. rounded and finished, and this doesn't feel it. You know, we still don't know um, what's going on with Osborne. That was built up for six series and then just well, that was another the red herring. again. The Thurwell thing, as, as you've already mentioned, um, I mean, Buckles obviously wasn't even involved or aware of what was going on there if he was posing as him online. Um, who is Joe's dad? You don't inter you know, introduce in the penultimate episode that um, she's wrong about the identity of her dad and then not tell them who George. it is. I mean, what was going on with... Well, it was suggested it was George, George there's, there's Costigan's character, doesn't it? That he'd sort of... I mean, this is another thing that I, I think is interesting. I've never known a series where you benefit so much from actually having followed in detail every single one. So it'd be interesting. I mean, I'm doing a, writing a sequel to a book now, and it's really quite complicated because, you, you know, you don't want to put in backstory and stuff. That, so you want it to be a standalone that someone can come to and thoroughly enjoy without actually having to know all the nuances and all of the backstory and history of what's gone on before, before, you know, that, that book starts. Now, there was so much of that in this this last one, so many threads that you thought were going to be tied up. But if I'd been sitting there and someone said, watch series six of Line of Duty, it's, it's absolutely great. Um, I, I wonder how lost I would have been. Yeah. I still would have enjoyed it because as you know, no, the, the, the program is, is brilliant and keeps you on your toes and uh, whatever. But if I didn't know all those nuances, there'd be a whole area that I just wouldn't get or appreciate unless I went back to the very beginning and watched them all. So anyway, that's that's well, another thing. But 12.8, BBC will be chomping at the bit and yeah. quite rightly so to get, to get another one. But I've got a feeling there's lots of things in, um, in, in uh, Mr. Mercurio's top and bottom drawers that he may actually choose to, to to get on with and uh, and leave it at that i hope not because i've you know i grew to love those characters we all yeah, did yeah. And beautifully played terrifically produced and um uh, wonderfully executed to the highest of standards just this strange strange ending and maybe it's not so it's it's as you say it's the right it's the wrong one for you in the moment maybe in a week's time or a couple of weeks time we'll look back and we'll go i'll tell you what that was actually quite brilliant, really, just know. to actually... I'm, I'm almost more upset, actually, that there's a... It, it's been rumoured that there are alternative endings because if that's the case, there really is no excuse for picking that one. But we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll move on. <laughs> if it's a this uh, is all we've got, I can kind of... I yeah. can buy that, but um, we had ones to choose from yeah. and we still went for that one. No, sorry. Well, that's, <laughs> I, that's here, so I don't know whether yeah, it's absolutely I know, true. I know, I know. <clears throat> but, uh, I, but anyway, yeah, I th something you can recommend, Bob. Let's go for that instead. We're nearly 20 minutes yeah. in and we've um, anyway. not actually... Um, 
got onto anything else, but you've got a book well, recommendation, go, haven't go. you? Well, I've got a book recommendation before I move to a, 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 a another television one, okay. um, which is the complete, in many ways, complete opposite to Line of Duty, um, and I'm loving it. And you know, um, not because it's the opposite to Line of Duty; <clears throat> it's just a, a, a very good example of of uh, a different approach to to um, drama te- uh, crime telling. Okay. We have a book available on Kobo, our lovely sponsors. God bless them. And before uh, I need to answer this, because someone said to me the other day, oh, you're making money out of out of this Partners in Crime. It's doing ever so well. And I said, no, we get a lovely sponsorship from Kobo, which pays literally for the nuts and bolts. And we're very grateful to them uh, f- for doing that. But we get no financial recompense from this. This is a labour of love, Partners in Crime. So, in fact, uh, in, in the last year, it's cost us because we've had to... Uh got all of this remote recording gear and things like that haven't we and so people behind the scenes together. doing bits and bobs so there are people who get money from it but it's not us <laughs> <laughs> no, well, well, good. You're helping the economy. Right, on yet, the book, I yet. am recommending, recommending, and this is perfect recommendation after our conversations about line of duty, because as we all know, I joked a few weeks back that it was a line of acronym uh, dictionary um, <laughs> because there were so many acronyms and and because it's so authentic and it's in, in sort of um, conveying police language and uh, and the words and terms used. Amanda Lease, who many people may know from her many television uh, uh, appearances, uh, she's a best-selling uh, satirical novelist, uh, best known for Selling Out and Secret Admirer. Uh, she has won various awards. She's been a writer on Radio 4's Weekending and has written uh, regularly for the Evening Standard, The Times, New Women, Cosmopolitan, etc., etc. But she's probably best known to people as a, a love coaching phone-in from the sofa of Richard and Judy and mood viewers on Channel 5 Live. Anyway, um, she has brought out a book which I think is absolutely splendid. Um, as Simon Brett, who recommends it on the front cover, says, a fascinating compendium of crime facts which should be on the shelves of every crime writer and every crime reader. It is called A Dictionary of Crime from Aconite to the Zodiac Killer. And it's absolutely, I'm going to show you if you get a chance, um, mm. it's absolutely packed with wonderful facts. So if you've been following the line of duty, and go, what, what's that, what's that? Well, I'll tell you what, you can turn to page, uh, here's a good example. Oh, you can, you can turn to page 72, and there is Chiss, C, Covert Human Intelligence Source. And if you go to there, you'll have a full explanation of what that is and many other terms, acronyms. Uh, But it also deals with murderers. It deals with it's everything is in here, every possible thing you could possibly uh, want to know from autopsy to backdoor parole. This works in America and and for the UK, I, I might add back, spatter, pattern. And what's the one I've pulled out here? Um, oh, acronym. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's got everything. It really is a fascinating book. And I'm finding it very useful because very often, you know, I'll be going through Google. But I'll turn to this first because mm-hmm. Amanda Lisa's has really covered uh, all the basics and much, much more and provided interesting anecdotes and snippets about famous murderers, um, um, uh, uh, crime-fighting systems of communication, um, everything. It's all there. So get it on Kobo. Uh, It's available now, and uh, I think it will enrich, as Simon Brett says, uh, the lives of both crime writers and crime readers. Yes, that's from Aconite to Zodiac Killer, Dictionary of Crime by Mandalise. I've just literally... Buying that now as we speak. Yes, I do so know what so when Order I saw placed. it, I came, I came across it and I thought, I know who's going to want that in his rich library. There we go of uh, of useful books. All, all done. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> well, you did mention that we are uh, kindly sponsored by Kobo, one of the world's largest ebook retailers. And if you want to get that book from Aconite, uh, where's it gone? From Aconite to Zodiac Killer, The Dictionary of Crime by Mandalise, then you can go to Kobo.com. And if you enter the promo code CRIME at the checkout, they'll give you 90% off of that um, that first ebook purchase. And you can use the promo code PARTNERS through the link in the show notes for 40% off of selected ebook purchases uh, forever, in fact, if you uh, if you've already used your crime one, uh, oh, we should also 
I should also mention 25 minutes in. Hello to our patrons as well who um, help support the show and uh, and keep us on air. And we had a message from one this week, which was um, from Robin Murray, who simply sent me a picture of a water cooler, um, which was lovely. I, I might have been exaggerating a bit last week. I said I'd never seen a water cooler. We were talking about Line of Duty being a water cooler topic. A water cooler moment, yeah. I was joking about A, my young and youthful vigour, and also the fact that so I don't have a proper job. Um, when I said I haven't seen a water cooler, of course I have. But thank you, Robin, for the picture of the water cooler. Um, Should we get a water cooler for the for the studio when we're back in studio? At yeah, least we we'll can be back sit in around. two weeks, won't we? We probably should, shouldn't we? Yeah, God, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. As long as it's nice really and quiet. Um, patrons... So, uh, thank you, Robin, for that photograph. I, of course, uh, know what one looks like, although I haven't stood next to one uh, for any great length of time anyway. Uh, so um, <laughs> I could keep, keep the pictures coming, um, and whatever yep. you happen to think about the show. We'd like pictures to actually suggest what you think about us. That's really oh yeah awesome. yeah yeah draw some draw some pictures send those in, um, yeah. but but our patrons do get early access to every episode. I I should say they get to watch it in full HD video. I do apologise for that, and they get access to an extra bonus episode each week. Partners in Crime, Arsenic, and Old Lace, which we uh, we record after the main show, and you also get a free book of the month every month. We are now in May, and I mentioned it on last week's show, but this week's uh, free book of the month is The Concealers by Janet Pywell, the first Rhonda George thriller. It's a brand new book, which uh, only just came out in March, actually. So uh, if you want to get a free copy of that, and if you are a Partners in Crime patron, log into your Patreon dashboard. You should see the, uh, the post there that was put up this weekend or last weekend. And if you're not a patron, we'd love for you to, to join us, join our growing gang. You can follow the link in the show notes or head to patreon.com forward slash partners in crime podcast. Right, Bob, do you have anything else there on your Oh, list? I do. I just want to get this one into the main main thing. Mm. As I say, a contrast to um, a line of the brilliant line of duty. Uh, this is uh, Ewan Ferguson uh, in last week's Guardian, <clears throat> an article I found because uh, I started watching, I think, a, just a superb new uh um, series on Sky called Mayor of Easttown mm. uh, and it stars um, the wonderful Kate Winslet um, so this is what uh, Mr Ferguson says about it and I absolutely heartily concur uh, Mayor of Easttown, Sky Atlantic completed despite lockdown snaggles over the past two years manages the most remarkable of things though it is set in modern times it time shifts us devoid of CGI or props, or an actual time machine, straight back to the Pennsylvania of the 1970s, of the deer hunter, of Billy Joel's Allentown. Despite Reagan, Obama, Trump, it really hasn't changed that much. Sure, there are cell phones, there's an internet, but mainly snow, lonely barket bars, and shavings of a living, the grinding of hopes. All of this, and so much more, is captured with triumph, as is the constancy of poverty. So, small town, US of A, and not one, but suddenly two murders to solve for a grumpy, dowdy, divorced every woman, a young granny to boot with family issues, some urgent, most of them tiresome, and a new limp after an ill-advised chase. Played by the beauty who was Rose in Titanic, Kate Winslet, has indeed grown up even since her last decade-old TV appearance, Mildred Pierce, and is, ex and is exuberantly unafraid to show us she has. This is normally a detective thriller in seven episodes, released weekly by HBO, thankfully, which means we have to wait. In truth, it's a story, as all the best stories tend to be, about not crimes, but people. Their infinite variety and teensy jealousies and gripes and sudden forgivenesses. And as such, works on every level. At the same time, crucially, it works on a basic whodunit level. As ever, my suspicions fixate on monobrows, zealots, teetotalers, priests and a weirdo, self-denying Jim fit jocks. Don't really know what that means. <laughs> uh, awards will follow, surely. And uh, I absolutely agree with that. It's only April, yet I predict with confidence... But my suspicion is that the likes of Winslet, creator Brad Inglesby, and director Craig Zobel know, know they have made something splendid 
and that will be reward enough. I think uh, we're absolutely hooked with, uh, with this show. It's wonderful. And as I said, and I didn't mean it in criticism, if you watch Line of Duty, you are thrown into plots and plot twists and w- with, with brilliant execution, um, uh, sometimes at the expense possibly of character, although we learn to love the characters in that show uh, too. This really does deal with the characters. And although there is the plot, there is the murder, it's coming deep within the everyday problems uh, and long-term problems and psychological problems and poverty problems of its central characters. And at the centre of that is Kate Winslet. And I have to say, I, I saw her in Titanic, but I didn't see Mildred Pierce, and I've seen very little of her work. Not <laughs> because I didn't want to, I just haven't. And uh, to me, she's just a revelation. She's absolutely sensational. Uh, she gives a, an extraordinary... Um, many leveled performance um and uh, uh unvain there's no pouting there's no you know you don't suspect that the, the makeup has been applied and the hair done uh just a, seconds before each take no 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 this is just an as it is performance um and she's brilliant i can remember years ago when she was working with the uh, uh, the great Emma Thompson and Emma Thompson said that uh, she found this, she was working with this young actress Kate Winslet and she was saying she was just the best actress she'd seen you know, in, in years and years and years and now coming to a little more f- maturity you can see that Emma Thompson was absolutely right Kate Winslet is at the centre of this uh, of, of this piece of drama and I can't wait for the next four episodes coming out very much like Ju- Line of Duty every single week none of this binge watching uh, um, and uh, you know, uh, well, you know, there's plenty to watch on and, and, and binge on uh, on on the on the television. But uh, you have to just uh, eek your happiness and your experiences of this series out till its end. So there we are. That's Mayor of Easttown, uh, as described by uh, The Guardian's Ewan Ferguson. Um, uh, And I beg you to watch it if you haven't already started, um, uh, because your time will be well spent. Lovely jubbly. And just before we go, I should probably mention which, which was going to be my uh, lead news story of the episode. Um, he starts on 32 minutes in. Uh, the winners of the 2021 Edgar Allan Poe Awards, which honour the best in mystery fiction, non-fiction and television published or produced in 2020. Uh, the winners were um, for best novel, Gin Patrol on the Purple Line by Deepa Anapara. Best first novel by an American author was Please See Us by Caitlin Mullen. The best paperback original was When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. The best fact crime uh, is Death in a Mud Lick, a cold country fight against the drug companies that delivered the opioid epidemic by Eric Eyre. Best critical or biographical book was Phantom Lady, Hollywood producer Joan Harrison, the forgotten woman behind Hitchcock by Christina Lane. Best short story was Dust Ash Flight, Addis Ababa Noir by Marzo Mengiste. The best juvenile book, Premeditated Myrtle, I think I've met her, uh, by Elizabeth C. Bunce. Best young adult was The uh, Companion by Kate Allender. The best television episode teleplay was the first episode of Dead Still by John Morton. Uh, The Robert L. Fish Memorial Award went to The Bite, Tampa Bay Noir by Colette Bancroft. The Simon & Schuster Mary Higgins Clark Award, it's easy for you to say. The Cabinets of (laughs) Barnaby, Maine by Elsa Hart. And finally, the G.P. Putnam's Sons Sue Grafton Memorial Award. Um, Very snappy title there. Well, I uh, went to Vera Kelly is not a mystery by uh, Rosalie Necht. So there well, we go. there we are. How comprehensive. There we are. There's a long list of uh, awards there and obviously given to excellent books. So that's it, I guess. So mm. um, I, I'm, if you're listening in to Arsenic and Old Lace, I'm going to be uh, presenting uh, Bobbo's Kobo Audio Booko of the Weeko um, for your uh, in-car entertainment or wherever you like to listen to your, your audio uh, entertainment. Um, so that's coming up shortly, uh, or if you're listening to that first. Uh, You'll be there by now. Probably won't it yeah. if you if you're watching this or listening to this. Well, as long as it doesn't put you off actually watching the main one, that's that's the main thing. But anyway, thanks very much indeed. See you shortly. Time for another cup of coffee. Ta-ra. Yeah, I've got to try and hit the right button here though, Bob. I didn't realise you were going to close the episode. Let's try. Partner. 
Partners in Crime was presented by... You know what? That went so well, didn't it? That went so well, me running that theme tune. I'm going to try it again, actually. None, none of this, you? None of this editing out the mistakes thing. No. I, no, I, no, I tried hitting it, it is, I missed it, I carried on talking, then I hit it while I was talking, and then I hit the pause button. It was an absolute shambles. It was an absolute shambles. It? And well, well done, I think, well, good. This is behind the scenes at the uh, the technical side. You very rarely do this. Um, <laughs> should or, try should again? Say, very, <laughs> very rarely own up to it. But uh, there we are. So shall we, do, do, would, would you like to end now? Because I, let's face it, that was my fault because I caught you on the hop. I yes. ended the series prematurely. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls, uh, this is uh, handing over to Adam Craft to finish this week's Partners in Crime. Partners in Crime was presented by Adam Croft and Robert Dawes and produced by Adam Croft. The theme tune was by the Caesareans. The Partners in Crime logo and imagery were designed by Stuart Bache. Partners in Crime is sponsored by Kobo, your favourite local bookshop, perfected. Perfected.